So let's take a look at the implementation of the locally linear embedding algorithm. As we've hinted at in the previous video, it really comes in two phases. The, the first phase, what we're going to do is work with our training set samples and construct local models for each of the uh, individual points in, in our uh, training set. In phase two, what we're going to do is take each of the points in the original space and embed them into a lower dimensional space. And we're going to do so such that we adhere to certain uh, distance metrics that we've computed during phase one. So let's focus on that phase one. Uh, the first step is to use the Euclidean distance metric to identify the k nearest neighbors for each sample in the training set. We can use other distance metrics as well. Euclidean turns out to be very uh, convenient here. These nearest neighbors really define the local manifold around this particular point. The key is, though, because we only have k nearest neighbors, that the dimensionality of that local manifold can be at most k minus 1. So if we, if we want to be able to express a, a manifold that is three dimensions, then we need to have at least four uh, of these nearest neighbors. Once we've identified the k nearest neighbors for a particular point, what we're going to do is construct a model of that point in terms of uh, a weighted sum of the neighborhood samples. And the, the question is, what are those uh, weights? So let's look at the, the mathematics uh, for this. All right, so I'm going to designate a particular training set point in this n-dimensional space as capital XI. And for part one of uh, this piece of the algorithm, we're going to identify the neighbors. So to be a little bit more formal, uh, so this symbol here means for every, so for, for every uh, sample in our training set, we're going to compute an ni so so we're going to compute the k nearest neighbors for sample i and uh, ni is going to be our designation for the set of those neighbors all right and then part 2 we're going to construct these local models. So first off, let's, uh, we're going to estimate the location of Xi as a weighted sum of its neighbors. Okay, so uh, the Wij's are, are our weights, Xj's, uh, J is just the set of samples that are in the neighborhood, and we're expressing XI as, as a weighted sum of those. And the constraint here is that all of our weights, the sum of those weights has to be equal to one. All right, so for our learning algorithm, let's now capture our cost function. I'm gonna write this a little bit differently than what the book does. We're going to do this with respect to individual samples. And the cost function looks like this. So we have our difference between the true location of sample i and our estimated location. And this is a squared error metric. In the book, the way he writes it is, uh, it looks like this. So this is just the squared length of the, uh, of the vector. This is just a different way of writing it. And the full cost function is just defined as all, sum over, over all possible i's of our ei's. So we're going to use this cost function to select our wij's. And, and as it turns out, this wij here for a given i only affects EI, it doesn't affect any of the other samples. So, so whether we try to minimize this uh, global cost function, or whether we try to minimize the individual cost functions, one for every sample, it, it doesn't matter. We end up with the same result. So I'm going to write this in terms of a uh, single sample. 
So we're going to set our W I J A's as uh, the W I J that minimizes E I. But of course, we also have to satisfy the this constraint here. Okay, so so argmin just means give me the wijs that minimize the thing here on the right hand side, but the constraint here is uh, the wijs have to sum to one. All right, so that's that's the optimization problem that we have to solve. I'm not going to go through the full mathematics. Uh, of solving it, but let's do an example just to give you a little bit of intuition about what a solution might look like. So here's a feature space, and I'm going to write lowercase x0 and x1 to refer to feature dimension 0 and feature dimension 1 here. I'm going to place uh, the sample in question, we'll call that sample 0. I'm going to place that at 5, 7. So x, capital X, uh, 0 is equal to uh, 5, 7. And now let's draw in a neighborhood. Point 1, let's put it at 4, 8, which is right here. So x1 is at 4, 8. x2. I'm going to put it at uh, 6, 5, which is right here. I'm going to put point 3 out here, which is at, which is at 8. And 7. So that's point three right there. All right, let's let's focus for a moment on the k equals one case. Or, I'm sorry, k equals two case. So when we say this, when that what that means is that uh, it's this point here and this point here that are our two nearest neighbors, and when we say w i j is equal to one, this implies that w0 1 plus w02 is equal to 1. So once we've chosen one of them, the other one is uh, completely determined. So what this means is that when we go to estimate our x0, this is going to be equal to w0, sorry, w, w0 1 times x1 plus w02 times x2, and, and that's it. And, and then we can use this relationship. To write it this way. And I'm going to just simplify things as in this way. So it's just going to be wx1 plus 1 minus wx2 since we have only the one. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, write out this cost function here. I'm gonna start with it down, down here for us. So for E, E0, this is X0 minus this sum here. And then it's uh, repeated again. So let me write this as uh, in this way. So this is the true x0, which is 5, 7, minus w and the true x1, which is 4, 8.
and the true x2, which is 6, 5. And then this piece here is repeated again. Okay. Now I'm not going to work too much with the through the linear algebra process here, um, but if we can split apart the the errors in the x zero dimension and the x one dimension, that's lowercase x zero and x one, and those uh, become the following. The, this this error becomes the following. So we have our are five, so I'm just working on the, the top row here. Five minus four W plus six minus six W. And that's, that's this side here, and then it's multiplied by this side over here. So this term is squared. And then looking, working from the second row, we have, uh, 7 minus 8w minus 5 plus 5w. And I need to correct my, uh, my signs over here. This is actually a minus here and a plus there. And, and that term is squared as well. So we can simplify this down to minus 1 plus 2w squared plus 2 minus 3w squared. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave it that way. So we have this cost function e0, and it is, through this derivation, it is just a function of w. So we can ask how e0 is going to vary as we vary w. So the way we ask that in a partial differential equation form looks like this. So we're going to, to take the derivative of this thing here on the right-hand side uh, with respect to uh, w. And when we do that, what we end up with is the two comes out and that's my minus one plus two w. And then with the chain rule, we also have to take the derivative of this with respect to w. So there's another factor of two out here. And then this other term here, uh, we have two, minus 3w, and we have to take the derivative of this inside of here, which is negative 3. All right, so let's expand this out and then simplify. Um, so this is minus 4 plus 8w, and this side over here is actually a negative sign here, minus 12 plus 18w. Which, if we then collapse all this together, then we have minus 16 plus 26w. So where we optimize E0 is the point where DE0 DW is equal to 0. So when we do that, then uh, so we set this to be 0. And what this means is that uh, W is equal to 16 over 26 which if we simplify, that's 8 over 13. Now w is equal to w01, and w02 was 1 minus this, so, uh, so that is equal to 5 over 13. Okay, so let's um, remember those two values. w01 is higher than w02. Let's look back at at the uh, position of zero with respect to one and two. Zoom in on, on that there. By expressing w zero, sorry, x zero as a weighted sum of one and two, what that means is we can be anywhere along this line here. In fact, for choosing negative w's, you can extend out beyond here. Um, but, but by setting our w, 0, 1 to be equal to 8 thirteenths, and w, 0, 2 to be 5 thirteenths, what we're expressing is that 
uh, our zero sample here is closer to one than it is to two. And in fact, our estimate x of x zero hat has to fall along this line and it is the point that is closest to the original point. So, so it gets projected onto this point here. So this, so x zero hat is there, whereas uh, this is uh, x zero. So with a neighborhood of just two samples, we cannot perfectly uh, capture where x zero is. We can come, we can come close, uh, but we can only express solutions that sit on this line between one and two. So let's actually work out exactly where that point is. So let's drop back to our uh, expression here. So remember that x, x0 was this weighted sum here. So x1, so this is now 8 thirteenths, and x1 is, has a coordinate of 4, 8. And uh, this is, Sorry, this is 5 thirteenths, and x2 has a coordinate of uh, 6, 5. If you work through that, then what you find is that we have a solution of 4.7 and 6.8. And that's, that's indeed the, the location of uh, this point right here. All right, so that, that's as far as we can go with uh, k equals 2. If we allow k equals three, then we get to introduce this other point, uh, point three, sitting over here. And when we do that, we can actually uh, hit x zero perfectly. And I'm not going to go through the whole derivation process, but let me talk about the intuition. In in some sense, you can think of the each of the points in the neighborhood as each pulling a little bit on x zero hat. And if they pull with just the right balance, then uh, they can make x0 hat align perfectly with x0. And uh, with the case with k equals two, they, they could pull only along, they could only pull along this line uh, here. But as soon as we introduce x3, and let me clean up the picture here. As soon as we introduce x equals three, then this, uh, point one can pull along this line here, point two can pull along this line here, and point three can pull uh, along this axis here. And if and we can actually compute a perfect solution for for our three Ws now, zero one, zero two, zero three, such such that x zero hat and x zero align with one another. So think of this as a two dimensional uh, tug of war, so to speak. Now, if three were not right here, if three instead sat along, uh, along the same line as one and two, so let me find a spot. So I wanna go down three and over two. So if three were here instead, then they will, these three samples would be collinear. I'm only gonna do this approximately there. They're uh, co collinear. And uh, what that would mean is that we could still only express uh, solutions that sat along this orange line. So, so if we want to be able to capture a, a manifold that is more than one dimensional, uh, as in this, this case here, then, then we need to make sure that we have uh, three, a neighborhood of three and we have to guarantee that the three neighbors uh, do not line up with one another. So typically what we end up doing is is selecting k such that it's uh, bigger than the the maximum a maximum manifold that we want to uh, be able to express. However, when we do that, what that means is that the that there isn't a unique solution to this particular cost function. So coming all the way back to uh, this cost function right here. So if, if we if we were to uh, say choose k equals six in this two-dimensional feature space, uh, I could pick many different types of many different sets of wijs that satisfied this, where we minimized 
EI and they summed up to one. In fact, there's an infinite number of solutions in the general case. So in this scenario, what we will typically do is add a bit of regularization. So we're going to change here our cost function. I'm going to add it uh, right here. And I'm going to take a sum over all of the weights that are involved in uh, the ith point and wij squared. And of course, there's a regularization parameter hiding in there too. Let me work that into the space I have. So lambda times that. And, and of course, there's uh, that, that same term shows up on the right hand side there. So, so when k is bigger than the manifold we're trying to uh, represent, one has to actually introduce this regularization term in order for us to have a unique solution. And, and this is a, a reasonable way to go. All right, that's it for, for part one of the uh, locally linear embedding algorithm. And next up, let's actually do that embedding step.